Not that I post them. So, Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you thanks. We just cherish the opportunity to come before your throne, come before you, and just lay down all of our expectations and agendas. Well, I don't know that I can lay down an expectation that I have, Father, that tonight is, is going to be just totally mind-blowing and, and just more than I can anticipate. Thank you, Lord. I, just the excitement, Father, has me ignited and, and literally on fire tonight, Father. So as we as we step through the veil, Father, into the into the um, realm of the heavenly realm, Father, we step in through the door of Revelation 4.1. And Revelation 4.1 begins by saying, And suddenly I wrote down these messages. I saw the heavenly portal open before me. This is the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the Passion Translation. Uh, I saw the heavenly portal open before me, and the same trumpet voice I heard speaking with me at the beginning broke the silence and said, Ascend into the realm. I want to reveal to you what must happen after this. Instantly, I was taken into the spirit, and behold, I saw the heavenly throne set in place and someone seated on it. His appearance was sparkling like crystal and glowing like the the carnal. Car carnaline gemstone surrounding the throne was a circle of green light like an emerald rainbow encircling the great throne were 24 thrones with elders in glistening white garments seated upon them each wearing a crown a golden crown of victory and pulsing from the throne were the blinding flashes of lightning, crashes of thunder and voices, and burning before the throne are seven blazing torches, which represent the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne were, there was pavement like the crystal sea of glass. The worship around the throne, or excuse me, around the throne and on each side stood four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature resembled a lion, the second an ox, the third had a human face, and the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of the four living creatures had six wings full of eyes all around and under their wings. They worshipped without ceasing day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the was, the is, the coming. And whenever the living creatures gave glory, honor, and thanks to the one who is enthroned and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fell face down before the one seated on the throne, and they worshiped the one who lives forever and ever. And they surrendered their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your plan, they were created and exist. Shabbat. Well, I have to say, I um, definitely hear the thunder, see the lightning, and I, um, 
I hear that voice of many waters. Good. starting to see this flame it's like it's like it's boiling you know just uh, starting to generate uh, just building and building and in its intensity Do you just see the fire, Bucky, or is it somewhere? Is it in the throne room, or do you know? Actually, it looks like it's it's the base of a fire, like you would you would start a fire on the ground, and it's like the base of a fire, and it's just starting to spread out. Okay. I can't tell where it is exactly. I see, um, I think maybe it's a setting sun, I'm not sure. And then <clears throat> the sun and then there's the wings of the eagle and the eagle is flying over uh, yeah. the waters and it is dark. Yeah. Yeah, I see the wings, the eagle wings. I can hear the eagle. Yeah, I can too. I can hear the eagle. In the in the in my actual body, I have a high frequency hearing loss, so I don't hear really high frequencies. But in my spirit, I'm hearing a really really high pitched uh, frequency. It's almost uh, not a squeal. It's it's almost like a, a several octaves above, like a the highest uh, violin could hit on a sustained note. I heard that earlier. I thought one of y'all must have done it. 
You thought we were playing it? Yeah, like one of those bowls. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love those singing bowls. And who was it that said they have a hearing loss? Uh, me, Bucky. Bucky, I speak, decree, and declare supernatural activity inside of your head to create anything that's missing, to reconstruct whatever is wrong, and I demand healing as we are in the throne room, that we everything that we speak, decree, and declare, it goes out and accomplish what it's said to do. So hearing oh, be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We agree. Debbie, can you say what would you say about a bowl? I heard a sound that I thought was one of those bowls, you know, where people ding it and it goes. Ee! Yes, yes. A singing bowl. Singing bowl. Yes. I well, it's just interesting because I've been getting those bowls lately. So yeah. You know, the last week ish. They're they're awesome. So powerful. My next purchase. So let's just engage with the eagle with the frequency. And you know, anybody see anything else right now? <clears throat> no, you know, I have to say I felt like the the eagle at first was, you know, representative of um the father, but um then just a moment ago, before you said something, I felt like it's, it's, you know, angelic. So I was just sort of looking at that. That was it. Well, if, if you need to open up, open up Revelation 4.1, everybody, and, and look at it and, and go over that because there's, I believe there's something here in the throne room that the Father has invited us to come into tonight. Um, other than just the healing, I think, I think there's something much more deeper and much more profound that he wants to speak to us about tonight. That's the sense I've been getting. Yeah. Me too. As I'm driving home, which I'll be home in a few minutes, I saw a dark, like, um, a black line coming down from heaven to earth. It, it happened four or five times. It would just, I, I had to look to see, is that from earth to heaven or from heaven to earth? But, you know, like in the, um, marvel type movies where something comes down and it's a force it was a black um the line was probably well i don't know how far away it was so how wide it was but it was a straight line not like lightning jagged but it was a straight dark shadowy line so you saw it in the physical yes okay cool
Debbie, you didn't get any, anything more than that, just that it was a line coming down? That's all I got, but I try to be careful not to do too much when I'm driving. No. <laughs> I'll be able to tune in real well here in just about two minutes. Okay. So, Father, we're here. We are, we have come through that door and are standing before you in your throne room. I think, you know, really, one of the things that I had seen in the very beginning, too, was, was this fire. And um, I, I just feel, you know how something will draw your attention and it just keeps coming back? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what's happening um, for me right now. And I see like this huge fire, the way I see it is it's kind of like in the middle of this scene and then it comes apart and it, um, it breaks off into several flames and they're almost dancing or so, you know, it's mo they're moving mm -hmm. and then they come back together and that, that's happened a couple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that as you say it. Yeah. You know, I, I also am smelling like a uh, frankincense. I mean, I um, I see what I perceive as, as uh, you know, a lot of incense burning at the same time. It's just there's, there is a lot for me going on in this scene right now. I hear the eagle speaking. Jeanette, what are what are you getting on it? She might have walked away here. Is anybody else seeing anything different? Don't be shy. What was really speaking to me earlier was just being an overcomer. And as I read um, 
In Revelation, it talks about the golden crown of victory and the crashes of um, lightning and thunder. And then the fact that the torches, the fire is the seven spirits of God and um, that the Lord is giving victory to his chosen ones and giving us understanding. I was going to read in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 11, the seven spirits of God. <clears throat> That's good. Are you going to read it? Oh, you want oh, to? Okay. okay. And there shall come forth a shoot out of the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch out of his roots shall grow and bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the reverential fear and obedient of the Lord, obedience of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. You know, I like this in three. It says, and shall make him a quick understanding, and his delight shall be in the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. And I was just thinking that's what God is making us. He's causing us to be people of quick understanding. And that we delight in being obedient and revelant and reverential toward him. Thank you, Father. And it's out of love that we do it. You know, it's out of our love for him that we want to operate like that. It's surely not a fear-based thing. You guys, I see a, um, like a whirlwind for me, and I saw it change from like a typical air whirlwind into this whirlwind of fire. Awesome. We just greet you, whirlwind of fire. We welcome you. Do we step into that or? I'm thinking absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was just thinking in my head, uh, asking it if we were supposed to, if it wanted to take us somewhere. I, um, as I was watching it, I saw, <laughs> it was sort of funny, I, I saw like hands of fire come out and they were sort of like beckoning us, you know, like, come on. So. Oh, wow. Is everybody in agreement? 
Yes. yes. Leave the seat in jail. Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. So on the count yep. of four, let's step in. One, two, three, and four, step in. Just thought of that song, Closer, Your Love Has Ravished Me, It's Taking Me Closer. Your love has ravished my heart. I'm sensing all of the things inside of us that we want to get rid of are being burnt up. And they're, when we're in this fire, we can, I can see them spinning around and being consumed. We're not consumed, but just anything, the dross, anything that is not of God, the chaff, the wood, the stubble, and the hay are being burnt up. And I can see them spinning around us. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with that. I was hearing that, that the fire will cause the dross to come to the surface and be taken away. And also the fact that our giftings will come up too. Yeah. You know, I, I saw I saw the dross as um, almost as, you know, the wrong energy that we <laughs> that we carry in us or that we may carry in us from time to time. You know that this just kind of came back to my remembrance this week. The Lord was prompting me about or speaking to me about it's been about 30, 40 years since I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I had my first really, really intense encounter with the Lord. And uh, he was he was showing me how. You know, everything happens in the kingdom in the twinkle of an eye. And it, at that very moment when I when when all that happened to me, I was I was transformed. I was I was at that moment the new creation. And ever since then I was I've been led into the wilderness. I've been tested and tried and and you know and through all the years, man, this this thought of not being worthy, not being good enough, failing constantly, you know, those sorts of things have has just almost been a driving factor, if you will, in a, in a lot of a lot of cases, you know, and watching the you know then coming through it and past it, and then you have this moment of feeling, oh, I'm I'm blessed, I'm a son, I'm I'm. You know, and this, you, you see the process of being cleaned up and healed. But the enemy has this way of convincing us that we've never, that although those things happen to us once and they still happen periodically throughout our walk, that, that we don't, we don't grasp the fullness and the completeness that it, that when it happened, it happened in its finality that, you know, um, in other words, he, he took me through this period of, of, or this, this thing of, of repenting for, for not believing what happened in that, in that first encounter that I didn't hang on to the truth of this was actually real. And so, um I guess what I'm trying to say is is that you know we we I believe most of us have gone to this place where we've not believed the account of the Lord saying that we are the sons that we're called to we've we've come to walk into that now through through the years and through you know stepping into deeper and deeper levels of intimacy with him but 
I think to go even deeper, we're, you know, to, to learn the heart of the father, we have to let go of all that baggage of who we thought we were and, and grasp hold of the fact that, yes, we are truly sons and daughters of the most high God. That he's called us to this place and he's anointed us. He's, he's blessed us. And, and, you know, the enemy can lie to us all he wants to. And if we choose, we can we can hang on to those things and, and wrestle with them. But the more we want to wrestle with them, I mean, as long as we want to wrestle with them, they're going to be there. But when we step beside those things and step beyond those things into the reality of sonship and, and come up higher, I think that's 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 the call tonight. Come up higher. Come on. In this uh, whirlwind, I, I, all of a sudden, um, I, I you know I I see us all in there. There's like this. Uh, we we're inside this fire tunnel whirlwind thing, and um, all of a sudden I'm seeing these like the uh, purple orbs that you can see through, but they've they've just like appeared and. Um, I feel like we're supposed to engage with them. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, if anybody gets a sense of what they are, you know, please share it. Um, I just heard the royalty of who we are. So I just want to, I just want to uh, welcome the orbs and let you know we're, we're glad you're here. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing these trumpets blast like a fanfare, you know, um, almost like the announcement of a, a queen or a prince or the king himself. Um, the, <clears throat> the purple orbs are giving us um, ease of movement, uh, more mobility. Thank you. Thank you. you moving, moving through different realms in the spirit, Anne? Is that what you mean? I think, I think so. I just, I, I, that's kind of what I was thinking, but what I heard was just the ease of, you know, able to move and mob and having more mobility. So, okay. But yeah, yeah. I mean, and when you it bears witness with me. Okay. Yeah, movement. That movement is more. I just got the word freedom. Oh, okay. Like freedom to be more than movement. Well, that's good. How about you, Carol? What are you getting? You're awful quiet. You always have good stuff to share. Well, I just felt like um, <clears throat> when when you saw the purple orbs. Um, I felt like um, like they were 
transportation. So, so the movement, you know, I felt like they were there for us to um, step into. Yeah. So, so may, I don't know if they're portals or if they are like modes of transportation to, to take us different places um, with the, with the fire and the and the whirlwind i i just heard the the phrase from the song come winds of fire mm -hmm. um yeah you know and so i've just been really in engaging with that just um just completely surrendering to father son and holy spirit and and the the angels that have have been sent to minister to us and to help us through this this whole process and and surrendering to the seven spirits who um yeah. who are also you know our tutors and our and our governors as as we learn this whole process of of moving in the spirit and and walking in the spirit Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I too want that at some point we will be stepping into the orbs. So Jill, to recap, we entered the fiery whirlwind and then we found some purple orbs. The way I saw it is they just sort of appeared. Yeah. Do you see them, Peter? No, I was enjoying God's presence and enjoying the, the warmth and the fire. <laughs> I, I have to say that at the same time, I did, I did put one in my mouth. <laughs> Yeah. When are you getting anything? Gwen. Oh, Gwen. Mm -hmm. She might have fallen asleep. It's very late in Germany. Right now. No. Sharon, are you getting anything? When we first stepped into the fire, I just felt an intense amount of energy. And I've just been kind of surrendering myself to it. And, you know, as Jill said, letting whatever dross come up be burned away. So I think there's been a sense of surrender to it. Yeah. But I see the purple orbs and I just, I sense their excitement. It's like their anticipation of whatever we're going to step into next with them. Yeah. Um, whether there's going to be that freedom or as someone mentioned, a portal taking us to another level. I'm just sensing their excitement and I can kind of feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Good. I feel like the purple orbs are actually connected to the trumpet blasts and fanfare. Um, I feel like 
I don't know, it's almost like a, a Disney movie where, where the, you know, going in like, like a um, chariot that, that takes you to the palace and um, the trumpet blast announcing the, the arrival of royalty. Wow. Okay, I was mostly focused on one big purple bubble that we were all in. And I saw that for a really long time. And um, it, well, at first we were kind of all in our individual bubbles. And then it kind of like, we all bumped into each other and it kind of morphed into one big bubble and we're all in it. And so that I was just like, that was my focus. And now I, I looked up and there's gazillion of these bubbles. Like I'm still, I, I still see all of y'all and, and we're all in one big bubble, but you can look out and you just see tons and tons and tons and tons of more of the same thing. Like it's a whole, it's just tons of bubbles. I heard the word Calvary, a Calvary of bubbles. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, as you say that, Jill, I, I really, it's almost like that's exactly what we're seeing. This is the um, cavalry leading us into the city. In fact, like it, yeah. yeah, I see the light. I see the light. I think that's the city. Yeah, I'm starting to see just catching glimpses of like the top top of the uh, castle or the castle wall or the the buildings in inside the wall of the of the city. So it's, I feel like this is a holy city. Not sure this is a city I've ever been to in heaven. I sensed it was a city, but I don't really see it like a city yet. It's just a bright light. Yeah. But I, even though I saw it as a, see it as a bright light, I sensed it was a city. Mm. Wow. Something's telling me that they they have prepared for generations for our arrival. That as as we come, we're we're the fire of the whirlwind is is blazing a path to this new city. And the color purple, when we look at the seven spirits of God, represents the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And that was definitely brought out or highlighted to me when you were reading that first passage, Bucky. Wow. Reverential fear. Thank you.
Yeah, I I seen the uh, the uh, movie about the the what what I can't even think of the name of it uh, about the ring and the trilogy. Uh, Token, I think Token wrote. What's the name of that? Lord of the Rings. And it seems like I remember a, a scene from that where where they rode up on the side of this hill and they saw this beautiful city at a far distance, you know, they were on their horses in the mountains overlooking the city and kind of getting that picture in my spirit. I feel like a lot of um, like excitement, you know, and a great anticipation. You know, I see as as um, kind of even going going above this city, this uh, area, like almost like you know a bird's eye view of it. This, this song closer keeps coming up again too and so i pulled up the lyrics to listen your love has ravished my heart and taken me over taken me over and all i want is to be with you forever with you forever so pull me a little closer take me a little deeper i want to know your heart i want to know your heart cause your love is so much sweeter and anything I've tasted, I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. And your love has ravished my heart and taken me over. Taken me over. And all I want is to be with you forever. With you forever. So pull me a little closer. Take me a little deeper. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. And there's the screech of the eagle. Yeah. I, you know, I've seen him the whole time. I just get, you know, flashes of him flying. Mm. I, I have a sense he's been with us the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, For me too. For me, the eagle at first was soaring and I got glimpses of him. But after that, he was really focusing, like looking right in my eyes. And I kept being drawn to his eyes. And whether it was like a bird's eye view or whether I was sensing we needed to look through his eyes. And so now that we're kind of above the city, you know, maybe we could get that the view of the eagle looking down, I don't know, but there was something about the eyes 
that were very significant for me. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it may be a clue for all of us, you know. Yeah. Sharon, were you seeing one eye or both eyes or seeing through them or looking into them? Um, initially it was, it was both eyes and he was like, you know, squawking or, or calling out, but I could see both eyes and it was like, you know, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? I just, the eyes were so, you know, prevalent. And then I had the thought, you know, am I to see mm -hmm. through your eyes? Um, and that was just sort of the question, you know, resonating within me. Yeah. I'm thinking of that scripture that talks about the single lie. Oh, yeah. Uh, Isn't that in Psalms? Let's see if we can find it. Did you, I'm sorry? Did you guys read uh, what Gwen wrote? No, not yet. What? Can you read? I saw the eagle was flying and showing us a valley between mountains. And this valley is a city, a hidden city, new city. This eagle is showing us new things. This valley city I see for the second time in this group. Then she says in the fire wow. I saw spirits changing old stuff in us to new stuff through them as a change. <laughs> Okay, I, I uh, searched for single eye, and in Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And in Luke eleven thirty four, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body is also full of light. But when thine eye is evil thy body also is full of darkness. Yeah. Matthew uh, 6 in the uh, Passion says the eyes of the Spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. Was thinking about um, the single focus of a dove's eye, and that is somewhere in Song of Solomon. Mm. That's interesting. Be Song of Solomon 115. And the Passion says, Look at you, my dearest darling. You are so lovely. You are beautiful. You are beautiful itself to me. Your passionate eyes are like gentle doves. Let's see, let's see if we find that a different translation.
Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes. That's in the New King James. And then uh, NIV says, how beautiful you are, my darling. Oh, how beautiful your eyes are doves. I'm pretty sure that doves and pigeons um, see 360 degrees because their eyes move separately. Ah. That resonates with me. I mean, as far as I think that, you know, our visions being um, worked on. Amen. I mean, I mean, we don't have to know if the doves and the pigeons actually have that. I mean, but I, I do think um, that we're being made whole. Amen. And, and the focus right now is with the vision. And, um, you know, a couple of assumptions back, um, vision was was in that one too. And I just think it's like, I think this is just a more of that, a, just a deeper, a deeper work, um, making that man, you know, having that manifest. Yeah, I was thinking that as well, Anne. Mm -hmm. Also, um, what resonates with me is the city is a new place, a new thing. Uh, um, and the reason why I think that is because um, it's kind of shrouded. It shrouded in, is as in a good, a good word. I don't normally use that word. I'm not real sure if I'm using it correctly, but I mean, I mean in a good way. Yeah. So is everybody still seeing this city from a bird from the bird's eye view or or something different? I'm still seeing the city from a bird's eye view. It's almost like there's a a um it's lit it's it's very lit up. But there's almost like there's a mist around it, but the mist is very light as well because the light's radiating from the city even through the mist. And um, I see. What, que yeah. what question did you ask? I, I felt like I, I didn't answer your question. You did. Okay. I, I asked if what people were seeing, like if they were still seeing the city from a bird's eye view or if they were somewhere else or? Actually, I'm, I'm on the ground outside of the wall, of course, a good distance away. And on the road, I'm watching this um, cavalry, if you will, escorting a chariot, a very elegant chariot. They're riding at a, at a pretty strong gallop, I guess you would say. Uh 
It's very, it's very prestigious. It's very uh, official. Official. Bucky, are they heading into the city? Yes. I'm not, I don't see myself in the chariot. I just see. Like you're I'm watching this thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Chariot made out of gold. Mm. That's how I see it, yeah. It could be. I'm not, I don't see it like that. I just. I don't really see the chariot, but I sense it and I, I hear it. Yeah, that's more of my. Hear, I hear the um, landing of it, I guess you would say. Yeah, I can hear the, hear the chains rattle from where it's connected to the horses and hear the galloping of the feet, of the hooves of the. Yeah, it's like kind of, it's like you describe, and it's also um, like, it's also, it's old school, and then also very high tech mm -hmm. merged. <laughs> it's, it's rhythmic. It's, yeah, it's different. It's almost like a, a word comes to mind, a riff, like you'd play on a guitar, you know, just like the, the repeated pattern over and over and over again. Of yeah. Um, mm -hmm, I had a word for that, but it's gone now. <laughs> It's like I'm falling into the procession. It's it's not that I'm in the chariot, but I'm in the procession following, going at the same pace. Not as a soldier, just as a... My heart like skip, skipped like a a beat, my heart, like, I can't even describe it. It's, uh, it's like, <laughs> I had the same thing happen in. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like, like a palpitation, but. Yeah, I'm not like, like one of those people, but this like, this clear, <laughs> clearly I am. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, I'm really not. I'm, I can be pretty deadpan. Like I don't get real. I mean, I would never read a romance novel. That would just, I just, that would never, never have I, never will I. Me neither. <laughs> and yet, and yet this just happened to me and I'm just like, what? <laughs> Like I can't make that happen. I can't do that. I can't get I can't get there in my own head like that. So this is hey, not me. He's healing your soul. Yes. It's our heart giving over the passion, the passion. It's our our heart skipping a beat for the one that we love. Yeah. I think that's who's in the chariot. I think it's Christ. I think I think it's Jesus in the in the chariot, Yeshua. You know, I had my first love gate worked on recently. So mm. maybe this maybe this is connected. I see, see the draw gate going down. 
we're, we're preparing to enter the city. The gates, the, the, the bridge is coming down over the moat. The gates are opening. The trumpets are, are blaring. I mean, just blasting away. People are shouting and cheering and It's like the, the gates are golden. Now, I don't believe it's the new city, Jerusalem, simply because the gates would be pearl. No, I don't so, either. Yeah. It's like I'm seeing this person like like a prince, likened unto a prince, uh, a, a very high official, and he's kneeling before the the door of the chariot. The the chariot stopped. He's kneeling before the chariot. He has a, a box in his hand, and it open, and this this diamond looking stone that's just it's just immaculately just beautiful almost can't look at it it's it's changing colors it's in the in the sticking up out of the box as he holds it above his head you know he's he's bowed down holding it above his head as an offering can you please say that again mm. Uh, uh, some somebody as as a uh, almost like a prince princely like person somebody high authority um, is kneeling at the door of the chariot of course it's stopped and before the door opens he's he's kneeling has a, a box in his hand and and the lids open on the box and there's a, a stone, a large stone. I'm talking like not quite like a basketball, more like maybe smaller, a little smaller than a volleyball, maybe. Uh, um, just a huge stone with changing colors. It's very translucent, very uh, transparent almost, but changing colors from I see in ruby and a deep purple and this glowing light coming out of it and you know just a like deep burgundy color of just like this deep deep ruby sort of color just but he's he's offering it above his head as he's bowed down did that cover it Thanks. Do you, think, do you think maybe that's us giving ourselves as a sacrifice? Could be. So that's a good point. Amen. I was thinking it was the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, our lives represent that of all the trials we went through for the Lord, and then the Holy Spirit offering the bride to Jesus. Mm. That's good. You know, through this whole thing, I just keep hearing, um, you know, the fire purifying us, the royalty. Oh, it's a lot of things I'm hearing in my heart. It's about our identity, who we really are in Christ. 
and what he's creating us to be you know i mean we've already we already are that but we're in the process of becoming that i guess and that diamond just reminds me of the pressures that we go through to purify us okay i heard a really odd word and um I'm, I'm hearing mercenary. Mercenary. Mm -hmm. Wow. The, the, um, the diamond was presented. And um, as soon as that y'all were saying all that, I heard mercenary. Hmm. Hmm. That's what the men of the mighty men of David were, were mercenaries. Oh, okay. Uh, that's my opinion. I don't know that I don't know that you actually say that scripturally, but well, I mean I, I think a mercenary is somebody that will fight <laughs> and they get payment for it, but it's yes. not necessarily their fight. I right. think they're involved, but they're in yeah, I just looked up the, the definition, and it's a professional soldier hired to serve in a foreign army. Mm -hmm. A soldier of fortune, an individual who takes part in a military conflict for personal profit, otherwise yes. an outsider to the conflict, and not a member of any other political. I mean, we are mercenaries because God already fought the battle for us. He fights our yeah. battle. This isn't our battle. Exactly. Hear that. That's awesome. Well, it's not, a word word. I go, it's not a word I go around, you know, I don't know that I've ever used it. <laughs> First book I ever read was about mercenaries. <laughs> These Texans. I was in the Army then. Oh, here's another amazing fact. Today is my actual, the day I was inducted into the Army. Oh, my. 34 years ago. Oh, my goodness. How did you remember that? You just, just because of this? Never. Like, jogged never, your memory? I've never forgotten that November 7th. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. It's a pretty important day for me. Yes. Wow. Yes. Have you seen Yeshua step out? No, but I had a, I had a thought about that a while ago. That um, <laughs> uh, I didn't see him stepping out, but I was imagining what what he was going to look like. And and when I when I started thinking about what he was going to look like, I saw each one of you in him. Uh. I saw myself in him. I saw every single one of us in him stepping through the door. Ooh, wow, I love that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> one thing I, I, the reason I asked is because I saw the door open and all I saw was his foot like come out of the door that's and that's all i see right now but the the foot i saw was like gigantic it was huge and i just, I just thought it was kind of strange hmm. 
I thought he he couldn't possibly be in that that chariot with a foot that big, you know. But I, I get that feeling we're supposed to engage the foot. Let's engage the foot. Maybe somebody look into the wound, you know, where the nails pierced it. Somebody look to the toe. Somebody look to the arch of the foot. Somebody look to the heel. Somebody look to the sole. All the parts of the foot. His toenails are beautifully manicured. <laughs> You know, I thought about, I almost said to me, look at his toenails. <laughs> That's awesome. No calluses on those feet. No calluses. That's amazing. You know, I see, I see the muscles on top of the foot, you know. Um, as small as they are, but the feet look very strong, very solid. I was looking inside the wound on top of the foot and just such bright light inside, Jesus. I was also um, just looking at the wound and, and heard the scripture, um, faithful are the wounds of a friend or something to that effect. I haven't looked it up, but I'm in process of doing so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm hearing blessed are the feet that carry the is it carry the gospel? Oh yeah. Bring the gospel, take the gospel. Uh, that's how, a, lovely, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Romans ten fifteen says uh, something. There it goes. Uh, and how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That's why his feet are so pretty. That's it. Thank you. I don't know about y'all, but I got tears in my eyes. Bucky, why the tears? I don't know.
I kept hearing foot soldiers and um, mm. and I did hear that how beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news and and um, it's just coming together for me uh, that we are his feet, we are his hands and this is the time that God is really sending us out into the highways and the byways. But the, the call of, you know, be sent, be sent, to go, to go. You know, that, that, that's a great point, Robin. Um, another thing that happened to me this week was this, um, I'd ask the Lord to reveal to me some things that the enemy doesn't want me to know. And, and um, anyway, he revealed some things to me. And, and in that, I saw this giant standing before me. And um, I, I wrote a friend of mine that um, I saw Goliath standing at a distance in front of me. So I went to the brook of God and I collected my five stones. And as I approached Goliath and I called him out, uh, I took the stones out of my pouch and placed them in the sling. I placed one in the sling. And the first one I placed in the sling was was called love. And the, the second one was called mercy. and third one i mean it just kept i can't even tell y'all five of the stones but it, it was like to defeat these giants that were coming you know we're taking their land we have to embrace them we have to love them it's it's the new way it's the it's the new old way it's the ancient way Amen. it's we're going to conquer our enemy by loving them Or we, you know, in the past, we'd go in and we'd cut their heads off and, you know, we'd hit them in the head with a rock. And when they're unconscious, we'd cut their head off. But in this, in this scenario, we go in there with our arms spread open and, and honestly, we let them have their way with us. And we never quit loving them in, 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 in that place. That's beautiful, Bucky. Thank you. We really need to go back to the and they'll know we are Christians by our love. I heard somebody once say that Christians kill their wounded. And just the little snarky comments about this Kanye West or whatever his name is, um, you know, the, the nasty things our people are saying, we should be rejoicing. Yeah. I'm just, I'm reminded of the highway of the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. And that is the beauty of Jesus, isn't it? How he just allowed the people he came for to crucify him. The way of love. Keep hearing this thing about being I don't I don't have the whole thing but it, it, all I'm hearing is to be fully given over to love that's not an easy thing
we don't have it in ourselves to love like that. But we don't have to do it through our own strength. All we have to do is yield to him and he will love the hard to love through us. I think also that's where the fire helps because yeah, his fire is going to burn out the dross that would, you know, maybe cause fear or whatever for us not to lay our lives down like that. Let's lay our lives down in love. Yeah. I lay mine down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Debbie. Yeah, I don't think that's anything that we can do corporately. We, it's an individual, it's an individual thing. Okay. I think corporately, Debbie, that we can do it by faith, for sure, together, you know? Yeah, that'll work. We all have the desire, and that, that's powerful. So Bucky, are we still like engaging his feet? Are we? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Lord, where are we? I think as as we come to this place, and everyone gets to the place where they've laid down what they can before we will step out of the out of the chariot yeah that's that resonates yeah and i'm hearing that song closer again what was pull me a little closer yeah take me a little deeper I read the passage of Jesus washing the disciples' feet today, of all days. And um, he told Peter, you cannot have any part of me if you do not let me wash your feet. Uh, what, what's, what's the scripture address? Uh, that was in John somewhere. Okay, I can look it up. I thought you. I thought you said which one it was. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was. I was listening to it today. Be John thirteen. I found something. Okay. 
Okay, so I've just been reading some things on the mercenaries and something jumped out at me. Free, remember how we got freedom earlier? Yeah. Free, com free companies would often specialize in forms of combat that required longer periods of training that was not available in the form of a mobilized militia. I'll type it in the chat. That's good. I like that. Yeah, it really jumped out at me. I mean, I've sat here and scrolled through a bunch of stuff and that, that was the only thing that hit me. Yeah, that's um, John 13, eight, where Peter says, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Peter being being Peter, he says, Oh, wash my hands and my my feet and as well in my head. <laughs> uh, no offense, Peter. <laughs> no offense. So, Debbie, you said a moment ago you were talking about, um, wait a minute, um, there we go, you were talking about, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> It'll come back. Is yeah. that the black line? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> you know, um, this thought stirring up, you know, Jesus says that he goes on to tell him that, that um, you need to take this example to heart and you need to wash each other's feet. Well, you, you know, this is what Debbie, you, you'd said that uh, they will know us by our love. Well, uh, in one of the scriptures I saw today, it says they will know us by our love for one another. Well, here's here's my point is is that even those who don't know that they're in, in the in the Lord's Supper, he he says he says um, in that passage leading up to the Lord's Supper, he says uh, he's praying to the Father and he says, "You have given me these." And and I'm giving them back to you, and I've only lost the one, the one, you know. Uh, let me find that, man. I got this thought going on. I can't get loose of it. I think that's John 17, isn't it the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, I think you're right. Do you have it, Robin? No, but I've been reading it for the last month. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible. Thank you so much, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that a Mr. Cook quote? Yes. 
<laughs> it's in the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. All right, starting in verse 6, he says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now you know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that you came, that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. And I am not praying for the world, but for those who who you have given me, for they for they are all for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to to you, Father. Protect them by the power of your name, of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe. By that name you gave me, none has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now. But I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may be full, have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hastened them, has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Okay, so that's John seventeen thirteen through twenty three. Well, I think for the end of the chapter, probably. Okay. But, uh, my my point is is that Jesus has lost none of them. He 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 came to seek and save the lost, and and my point is is that we're all we've all been lost. He's he's done it for every single one of us, not just our little group, not not just those who. You know, at this point, call themselves Christians. He did it for those that are still lost. Who's not lost? Those that have found him already. Some of them that claim to have been found are not even found yet. So what? Do you That's who he sent. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say so I'm 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 trying to kind of pull all of this together like how what how is this connected you know with this city that we Oh wow I don't I'll just say this I, you know I've been kind of waiting to see if anybody heard anything but um when you were describing the city and you said i don't think this is new jerusalem i heard the city of overcoming and i you know and i haven't heard anything else it just flitted through my my mind and that was it. but i i just I'm just going to throw that out and uh, good. We are nearing our two hour mark, so I guess we better. Uh, ask the Lord to start bringing this into pulling it together here. Yeah. Um, I would like to just um, give you my thoughts. Um, I didn't uh, see too much today and um, I was engaging with the eagle all the time um, just because that's what I felt God told me to do today. And that's good. Yeah, so what God told us today or showed me today 
when we started, I said to God, I asked God, why am I not seeing? So he said, I should listen. And that's what I did today. <laughs> and just um, as you guys said, you need to bring everything together and how we're going to bring it together. God showed me what this all meant. Today. Wow. Okay. And um, he revealed to us our identity today through everything. Every little picture, every color, everything we experience today was our identity in him. Who we are as his son. And um, it's as we step through everything that we went through today, um, he has done a work in our lives that we will not be able to understand with our um, mortal minds. He has worked in our spirit man and imparted identity to us today. And um, I really, when Joel has got this ready, I really just want each and every one of you to go back and listen to what you have received from God today. Because today was a very, very significant day for all of us. I agree. So. That is, that's all I have. <laughs> wow, that's, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's, uh, that's really good. Would anybody like to, to add to that? Yes. Psalm 110. Verse 3 in the Passion Translation. Your people will be your love offerings. In the day of your mighty power, you will be exalted. And in the brightness of your holy ones, you will shine as an army arising from the womb of the dawn, anointed with the dew of your youth. That's Psalm 110, verse 3. It's already in the chat. Okay, thank you, Peter. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anne or, or Sharon. You guys have anything? Um, Sunette and Peter just capped it all off for me. I can't add anything to yeah. it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well said, and I feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Any last thoughts, Debbie? Father, thank you for purifying us and sanctifying us and setting us apart for your service. Thank you for making us role model citizens for the kingdom of heaven to represent your love and your light here on earth, to seek and save the lost and bring them into the fullness of you as we bless them with your love, as we love them with your passion and compassion. We get ourselves out of the way and just be a perfect, pure, holy vessel for you, representing all that you have, all that you paid for, all that you sacrificed for and giving it to all the people that you have chosen and only lost one, the rest of them. We go forth in your name, baptizing, healing, teaching, preaching, making disciples to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Amen. Yeah. Amen. And you know, well, Debbie, while you were talking, you know, I, I just realized that we, we, can release this you know on a daily basis to others this 
um, engagement that we, we've had tonight, we're carrying it in us and we surely can release it to others um, without saying a word. You know, the intent of our heart and that desire and just to to release as you as you think upon those things and you feel it in your heart, you know, we we have the ability to release those things, these these types of things to others. So I I would just like to encourage all of us to do that. Amen. So Father, we thank you for uh, tonight, and um, we love you. We love you, so, Father, and are so grateful for uh, the, these times that that you share with us and lead us and impart and teach and expand us, Father. And uh, Father, we do seal all dimensions of this ascension with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.